Hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Cinema Recap. Today we're going to be talking about that 2014 action-adventure film, Big Game. And here we have the President of the United States getting stranded in the wilderness of Northern Finland. Thankfully, a young teenage boy camping in the woods rescues him. Spoilers ahead. You gotta cock it, motherfucker. Now the movie starts with a little boy and an older man walking into an old cabin looking at some picture frames on the wall. The pictures depict various young men in hunting gear holding up animal carcasses like trophies, and they start conversing in Finnish. The man asks the boy if he recognizes anyone in the pictures, and the boy points to one. The man affirms that the person in the photo is himself, at 13 years old. And the man leaves the room while that boy stares wistfully at the photo frames. So sometime later, deep in the forest, a caravan of trucks drive through the mountain road. The boy sitting in the passenger seat, practicing his English on an old recorder, while the man drives one of the trucks. The man looks through the car's glove compartment and hands a map to the boy, whose name is revealed to be Ascari. Now Ascari looks at the map for a red cross, which is supposedly a secret spot with plenty of game like deer and elk. The man, Tapio, who we find out is Ascari's father, gives his son tips on hunting. So the caravan sets up camp in the forest. A shot is fired into the air, signaling for Ascari to begin. Now he tries to start his vehicle, but makes a slight mistake. Tapio adjusts it for him, and Ascari makes his way up to the cliff where a bow and arrow is set up. So he grabs a hold of the bow, and with great difficulty, tries to draw the string back, but fails. To the displeasure of everyone watching. Tapio argues with a man who thinks that Ascari should go home and not continue his hunt. Well, Tapio tries to convince the man that Ascari's ready, that they've trained for this. And Tapio's a skilled hunter, something he believes he passed down to his son. So the other guy gives in, allowing Ascari to continue. Then he gives a grand speech, stating that Ascari has one day and one night to go into the forest alone and bring back an animal he's hunted down. The scene shifts to a different man getting ready for work. He shaves and looks down at the scar on his chest. Then he dons a bulletproof vest and a suit, puts on his earpiece, and looks outside to the clouds. Well, he's on a large government plane with that presidential seal emblazoned on it, with two smaller planes escorting it through the skies. He walks through and asks two standing guards whether the president is awake or not. About yet? So the man, whose name is Morris, enters the president's cabin, where the president's reading the newspaper and complaining yeah. that his poll rates have Three lowered. Morris alerts the president that they'll reach Helsinki, Finland, in an hour. They have a press conference to get to, and Morris plans to retire after the trip. Now back in Finland, the boy's hunting with a bow and arrow. Again, he attempts to pull that bowstring back, but isn't strong enough to release the arrow far enough. He practices with a wooden statue of a deer, pretending he's killed it and pantomimes eating its heart. Further in the forest, a helicopter soars downwards. Over the intercom, the pilot asks three passengers what kind of animals they're looking to hunt. One of the passengers merely responds that they're looking for the big game. Big game. The passenger looks down at his tracking device and asks the pilot to land. Once they land, the passenger walks out while carrying a briefcase. He sits down in a chair one of his men arranged for him and looks out onto the forest. Much to the pilot's shock, the passenger pulls out a missile and casually explains that he's going to use it to take down a civilian aircraft. Now the pilot, becoming more and more unnerved, asks if the three men are terrorists. The main man more or less affirms that they are and tells the pilot that they should start running because they're going to kill him. And with that, the pilot begins to run away and the man uses it as an opportunity to test his missile. Locking in on the form of the running pilot and triggering that missile, it obliterates a whole section of the forest, including the pilot. Switch to Air Force One. Morris is walking through the plane and into the cockpit. He's told the plane is nearing its destination and will begin the descent. Suddenly, alarms go off, and Morris is told that a missile is targeting their plane. Well, the plane's defense mechanisms are jammed. Morris immediately calls for an emergency evacuation. Emergency evacuation. The president is under attack. The plane shudders as Morris grabs the president who only has one shoe on, and forces him into a pod for evacuation. A crew of guards follow the president's pod out in parachutes. The one remaining guard notices that the parachutes are not opening, and alerts Morris that something's wrong. Room, Morris pulls out a gun and shoots him, and then puts on his own parachute and drops down. The missiles hit the aircraft just as Morris flies down to the ground. Meanwhile, Ascari, who's alone in the forest, hears and then sees the planes coming down. 
He falls to the ground, screaming as they crash. And when he gets up, he's surrounded by a burning forest. Now at the Pentagon headquarters in Washington, D.C., a woman informs a man that Air Force One has crashed and the president was evacuated in an escape pod with all communication and signals lost. They walk down a corridor and into a room where the woman introduces the vice president to the man, whose name is Fred Herbert. He was a longtime CIA operative that now leads the terrorist intel unit. A general fills Fred in on everything that's happened while Fred's walking around casually eating a sandwich. Now, the general believes that it's a terrorist act, but the vice president argues that it might have just been a mechanical failure, which is very unlikely. Fred speaks up, saying that it was definitely a terrorist attack with around 5 to 10 men involved. He manages to piece together what kind of missile they used, and that they had a man on the inside to disable countermeasures and defense systems. Fred suggests the only thing that they can do is find the president and bring him home. Bring him home. Cut to the forest. Morris's parachute has him stuck in a tree. He unhooks himself and falls to the ground, but is relatively unharmed. He radios in, calling for the other agents on the ground. No one's answering, and Morris glad is it. glad to All hear it. Out. On a different device, he mutters cryptically Angel's that down. the angel is down. Good to go. Now Ascari looks around the wreckage, his bow and arrow at the ready. He spots the president's evacuation pod and throws a rock at it, but it doesn't shift. He creeps closer and knocks on the door. A knock answers back and a finger tries to write a message on the pod's window panel. It's the code that opens the door. Ascari types it in and the pod opens. He runs back quickly and the president exits the pod. He lights a flare and yells at Ascari to show himself. Well, he stays hidden, but uses his arrow to throw a paper cup tied to a string at the president's feet. President picks it up and holds it to his ear. Ascari speaks from the other side, asking the president if he's an alien. Well, he replies that he's from Earth and comes in peace. Earth. So with that, the boy comes out of hiding with his bow and arrow drawn back. The president proves his identity by showing Ascari his passport, and he tells the president that there's no village or town nearby. Now back at the Pentagon, they've tracked the president's escape pod and are sending in helicopters to Copy find that, it and secure one, the president. Secure the president. Switch to a farmhouse somewhere in Norway. A dog barks at something, prompting its owner to come out and investigate. He finds a beeping device underneath his trampoline. The device is the escape pod's tracker, which appears to have separated from the escape pod. And so, the government helicopters return home unsuccessful. The VP is furious that the president is still unfound and commands the general to sort out this problem. Back at the crash site, Morris and the three terrorists that blew up the plane find the escape pod. They open it, but President's not inside. Meanwhile, the President's walking through the forest, with Ascari leading the way, who's explaining that he's a hunter and he'll keep him safe with his bow and arrow. And the President appears to doubt him, but lets him. Now Ascari leads the President to his vehicle, and he asks to be taken into town. However, Ascari refuses, no. saying that he's on a mission for his birthday. He makes the president sit in the back and they set off through the forest on Ascari's vehicle. Morris looks at the footprints near the escape pod and surmises that someone must have helped the president escape. He goes and shoots two of the guards and promises the head terrorist, whose name is revealed to be Hazar, that he'll deliver the president to him. We find out that Hazar paid Morris to betray the president. Now Morris also mentions that he has a piece of shrapnel lodged in his chest from saving the president once. So back at the Pentagon, Fred and the general puzzle over the situation. He starts tracking leads by looking up hunting companies in the area, and then asks the satellites to be moved so that they can survey the land. Now we see Ascari park in his vehicle and looking at his map, where the big red X is drawn. And he explains that X marks the perfect place to hunt. So they camp there for the night. We camp here. They eat over a fire and converse. Ascari's asking him- What is him it like to be powerful? and says that his dad is famous in the region because he was a powerful hunter who hunted down a bear when he was 13. At 13, every boy sent into the forest to kill something as a test of manhood. That's the current quest that Ascari's undertaking. The president advises that he doesn't have to be tough, but just has to look tough. He tells the boy an embarrassing story about himself and they bond. Now the next morning, the president wakes up to the sound of Ascari making deer noises to attract prey. Ascari also found the president's other shoe and throws it at him, and then continues climbing up the mountain and making deer noises. Meanwhile, Morris, Hazar, and the other terrorists hear Ascari's noises. Now Ascari's climbing up a ledge and comes across a large freeze box. Inside is the head of a deer, which was recently killed. 
with a note from his father that simply says, Happy Birthday. Nearby, the president finds the dead bodies of his guard littering the mountainside. It seems that someone deliberately tampered with the parachutes so that they wouldn't open. He takes a gun from one of the bodies and hides behind a rock. He watches as Morris and Hazar discover the campsite, realizing that it was Morris who betrayed him. The terrorist call in the chopper. So the president rushes to Ascari, who's sulking by the deer head. He's upset that his father killed the deer for him, which means that his father really didn't believe he could do it himself. The president gives the boy his pin, a reminder that he protected and rescued the president. Now Ascari asks what's wrong, and he tells him that men are hunting him down, and they need to separate. Then Morris shows up and radios Hazar. He then tells the boy to get lost. But instead of listening, he pulls out that bow and arrow, aiming it right at Morris. He goes to fire, but predictably, the arrow doesn't even get close. The president tries to shoot his gun, but doesn't know how to. Morris grabs and empties the gun, and then he and the president get into a fight. Morris has the upper hand. The president shouts at Ascari to run, to which he does. Back at the Pentagon, they spot the terrorist helicopter and follow the path to the president. They watch the cameras as Hazar exits. Fred apparently knows who he is, stating that he's an illegitimate son of a rich oil sheik in the Gulf. And he's just a certified grade A psychopath. Well, Hazar sees the freeze box and decides that he's going to turn the president into taxidermy like a hunting trophy. He transfers $10 million into Morris's bank account. His men force the president to get in the freeze box and Hazar closes that lid shut. Scari's watching all of this, hiding nearby. The Pentagon has sent troops to save him, but they're too far away to get to him in time. Ascari's looking at the photo of his father and finds his courage. He sets down his pack, and as the helicopter is pulling the freeze box up, he jumps from the ledge and onto it. Morris is alerted that Ascari got on the freeze box, so they try to shake him off by flying it into some trees. Morris is trying to shoot him off the helicopter, while Ascari urges the president to jump down from the freeze box. The boy uses the knife to cut the freeze box loose from the chopper. And they manage to shake off the helicopter for a brief moment. Morris starts shooting at both of them, so they both hide inside the freeze box for cover. Now Ascari uses his body weight to force that box down, and they end up falling into a room. They're pretty badly bruised, but otherwise uninjured. Using that freeze box as a raft while floating down the river, the president realizes that they stumbled on the crash site of Air Force One. The Pentagon staff are still watching, and the vice president immediately orders those Navy SEALs who were tasked to retrieve the president be given new coordinates. And the VP also notices Fred secretly texting something on his cell phone. Now on the helicopter, Hazar receives an SMS from an unknown number. It simply states, just kill him, along with coordinates. Now Ascari and the president are swimming away from the freeze box towards the plane. They get up to the upper deck, which is only half submerged but littered with dead bodies. They try to rest for a moment, but hear footsteps above them. Then the roof just bursts open as Hazar's rappelling down. He sets up a bomb with a timer for five minutes and radios in to be rappelled back up. But Morris betrays him, pulling the rope up so that Hazar is stuck with the president and the bomb. While well, the two men are fighting, with Ascari presumably unconscious. He's trying to drown the president, only to be hit in the head by the boy. Hazar tries to use the gun, but it's taken away by the president. You gotta cock it, motherfucker. Who empties a round of bullets right into him. Well, he's dead, but the bomb will detonate in a minute and Morris keeps shooting from the chopper. So the two engage the cockpit's emergency evacuation, which sends the seats flying up. For a moment, they're at eye level with Morris as the parachutes open. Ascari draws back the bow and fires, shooting Morris in the chest. It bounces off harmlessly thanks to the bulletproof vest, but manages to dislodge the piece of shrapnel that's been stuck inside Morris, critically wounding him. And he falls from the helicopter just as that bomb goes off. Now Tapio's in his jeep, anxiously waiting for his son to get back. Another man suggests that he must have gotten lost in the forest. And that's when they hear the explosion from the river. A yellow parachute lands on the car and Navy SEALs pull Tapio and the other hunters out of their vehicles and onto the ground. The entire lake is vaporized and everyone at the Pentagon is sure that the president died in that explosion. And the VP believes he'll be sworn in as the next president. Now behind the hunters and the SEALs, an unidentified parachute gently lands. Ascari appears on the ledge, with the president beside him. Ascari reunites with his father, introducing Tapio to the president. And the president calls him the bravest man he's ever, bravest met. Man I've ever met. Seals drop a report to the Pentagon saying the president's okay, and Fred walks off, looking dismayed. So the VP follows. 
They talk quietly in the bathroom, revealing that Hazar was a secret agent working for them to kill the president. Now, the vice president mourns his chance at becoming the next president and wonders if anyone will find out that they had planned this. Fred, in response, kills the vice president, making it look like an accident. Meanwhile, Ascari and the president pose for photos, surrounded by government helicopters. The photo gets into the papers, and then it's framed in the cabin with all the other photos that Ascari was looking at in the beginning of the movie. All right, all right, classic plot twists, but, you know, great ending for Ascari. If you were in Ascari's place, do you think you could have summoned your courage and helped save the president too? Let us know in those comments below with that hashtag CinemaRecap. Till next time.